Well, I want to thank you for the chance to be, to be here and to speak with you. I say this every year, but I really mean it sincerely that this is one of my favorite events. It's a, a unique opportunity for us to get time outside the office when we're so busy and preoccupied with your pressure to really talk about glaucoma in more detail. And I find that to be a special privilege. How do we advance the slides? How do we advance the slides? Hmm? Keep Great. Okay. So I'm going to talk about drug delivery, and we are privileged here at Will's Eye to work with many of the companies that are developing new products in glaucoma, and I hope that is an interaction that will benefit some of you with access to the latest technology through our research projects. Currently in glaucoma, we treat the, we treat the eye to lower the pressure using eye drops, lasers, and surgery. And in some people, we may just watch you. Sometimes that may be the most important part of following for glaucoma to prevent you from getting worse. But there's a lot going on in glaucoma to change that paradigm so that we may ultimately have other options to present in terms of medical management. Medical management right now is confined to the use of eye drops. And if you have glaucoma and take eye drops, you know that that can really be a pain. So most people who have glaucoma do need eye drops. And in fact, most people who need eye drops need more than one medication in order to appropriately control their pressure. So for people with glaucoma, eye drops are typically a fact of life. And unfortunately, they're expensive, they can be challenging to use, and that can make it very hard to control eye pressure over the long term with this kind of technique. We're lucky that in ophthalmology, and in fields outside of glaucoma, there is already a precedent for treating the eye with medications outside of the realm of eye drops. So I want to give you an example here. If you follow this graphic, especially looking down below, you'll see that medicine is being injected into the back half of the eye, and in this case, that's to treat macular degeneration. And over the past decade, a massive revolution has taken place in the treatment of macular degeneration and that revolution has resulted in hugely better vision for people who have macular degeneration. And it involves using injectable medications, injections inside the eye, in order to treat the disease and to prevent vision loss. And they've been amazingly successful, and I think that really sets the stage for a condition like glaucoma, that we should have access to injectable treatments as well. I think some of you may be saying, well, the eye drops are enough of a pain. Why would I want to have an injection? But the injections can treat glaucoma and lower pressure for much longer than an eye drop that you may take multiple times a day or even with some eye drops only once a day, whereas an injection might treat glaucoma to lower the pressure for months at a time. So a big difference in the way we treat the condition. In addition to eye drops, there's also a precedent, again in the field of retina, for treating inflammation inside the eye with a depot medication, meaning an injection of a medication where there is something inside the eye that then releases the medication ongoing over a long period of time. If you look at this picture, it shows an injection of a device called Osirdex, which contains a steroid to treat inflammation. And this gives you some perspective for just how small that implant actually is. And it releases the steroid over the course of a long period of time in order to achieve a better, more consistent therapy. We're moving in the direction of having depot medication injections in the field of glaucoma. The first one I want to mention is something called bimatoprost SR. Bimatoprost is a long name for the medication Lumigan, which some of you who have glaucoma may have used in the past. This particular medication may be injected into the front of the eye in what, for lack of a better word, is like a pellet that then decomposes inside the eye in a way that's totally safe and releases medication as it does. And that might enable someone who would otherwise take an eye drop to have this injection and have pressure-lowering benefits from the medication without using any eye drops over the course of four or maybe even more months. This is a medication that's currently undergoing clinical trials. We're really living through a revolutionary time in glaucoma. And in fact, we're participating in the clinical trial for this medication here at Wills. And I'm sorry that this is such a lousy picture of the injector for that device, but this is such a new product that it's closely held. And that's literally the only picture I could find of the injector device. 
The company that makes Biomatter Prost SR is one of the biggest companies in ophthalmology and in glaucoma. But as technologies change in medicine, we're finding that other companies are jumping into the battle against glaucoma and applying things they've learned in other fields in order to help us. And as an example, this company, Invisia Therapeutics, is a spin-off of another company, a nanotechnology company called Liquidia Technologies, that has developed a mechanism for building microparticles. And I want to show you this little vi video to give you a sense of what they do. It's sort of like a chemical muffin tin where they're able to create a mold and then through, use that mold to create these tiny little particles. And because they can engineer them so precisely, they have real applications within the field of medicine. And they are, in fact, developing another depot implant that uses the medication Travitan, which others of you may be familiar with to treat glaucoma. And that, again, is a depot medication that might involve an injection and then release the medication over a long period of time. And I want to take a moment to digress, because I'm betting that many of you have heard the buzzword nanotechnology. And it's really hard to understand what that means, even from a doctor's perspective. Nanotechnology refers to the engineering of things on a nanoscale. A nanometer is 1,000 millionths of a meter, whatever that means. I can guess that that's pretty small, but it's hard to get any perspective on that. So I want to show you a little video to give you a sense of the level at which these particles are being engineered. And what the video is basically going to do is compare the size, in width not length, of a human hair to the size of the Empire State Building, to give you some relative perspective on just how small a nanometer actually is. So how big is a nanometer? And if we look at a human hair, and again, the width, not the length, it changes, it's variable, but in general, it's about 0.1 or one-tenth of a millimeter. So pretty small, smaller than you could measure with a ruler. And if we blew that up in relative terms, so that that one-tenth of a millimeter, that diameter of the human hair, was the same size as the Empire State Building, we could make some comparisons. And one of them would be just how big would, for example, a red blood cell, which is coursing through all of our arteries and veins right now, how big would that be on an Empire State Building scale? It would go to about the 10th floor. If we looked at the cell of a bacteria, it'd be about the third floor. And the protein molecules that make up cells, about one and a half feet of that Empire State Building. And look down here, and you'll see our nanometer. It's like a speck on the Empire State Building which also means that in comparison to the width of a human hair, the nanometer is like a speck on that human hair. So the engineering that's taking place right now is truly amazing, and we're hopeful that that will yield better, pro better products throughout the healthcare field, including in ophthalmology and glaucoma. Injections are not the only ways in which medication depots are being delivered. And I want to show you a video about another device called the Helios ring. This is a ring that's 26 millimeters in diameter and actually goes on top of the eye. So you'll see it being positioned here underneath the upper eyelid and then also the lower eyelid. And inside of that ring is glaucoma medicine. And over the course of time, that ring releases the glaucoma medicine onto the surface of the eye, thereby preventing the patients with it from needing to take that eye drop and hopefully keeping the eye pressure down during that time. And my gut reaction to that is, doesn't look like it would be very comfortable to wear a ring on your eye. But you'd be surprised that 90% of the patients in this study never needed that ring to be manipulated and were perfectly comfortable over the course of six months. So it's really an innovative and neat technique, and who knows if that will ever make it to the clinic or be useful or what it will really feel like. But it gives you an example of people who are out there making concrete pro progress on a way to deliver your medications without you needing to take an eye drop. And of note, the person who's the lead author in this study is a former Will's Eye Fellow. I want to talk a, a little bit about the tear drainage system. The fluid we're talking about in glaucoma is really inside the eye fluid. But your tears bathe the outside of your eye. And those tears drain from the surface of the eye into your nose through a system called the tear drainage system. And the opening of the tear drainage system is in your eyelids, and we call it the punctum. So there's little drains in the upper and the lower eyelid 
called punctum. And the tear fluid goes through those drains and tubes inside your face and into your nose. And that's why when you cry, your nose runs, because you have more tears, and those tears are then flowing into your nose. Well, sometimes people who have dry eye need more tears. And for some people with dry eye, an effective treatment might be to plug those drains to keep the tears retained on the surface of the eye. Now, that's not a good treatment for everyone, but some people already get these, what we call punctal plugs, where we're plugging the drain to back up the tears. What if those punctal plugs contained a glaucoma medicine? Uh, well, in fact, there are two different products now that are punctal plugs embedded with glaucoma medicine, so that medication then goes onto the surface of the eye, and again, in those patients, may eliminate the need to take that eye drop. I want to show you about two of these punctal plug therapies. The first one, made by a company called Ocular Therapeutics, goes all the way inside the start of that tear drainage system. And over time, it dissolves at the same time that it is uh, what we call eluding or releasing medication onto the surface. And in this special picture, you can see with a special light that this person in their punctum actually has one of these devices. So that is one idea for a way that we can deliver medicine to the eye without needing an eye drop. And it's not the only punctal plug device that's currently uh, taking part in clinical trials. There is another punctal plug made by a company called Maddie Therapeutics. And this punctal plug, instead of going all the way inside the drain, sits like a cap on the drain itself. So if you look at the plug here, there is a wider tip that rests on the punctum. And this part goes into the punctum. And this part is like a canister in which a medicine could be placed and then released onto the surface of the eye in order to lower the pressure. Pretty neat ideas. It's important to note that I changed the title of the talk a little bit. The title that's on your agenda is the end of eye drops. And I made it the end of eye drops question mark. And that little thing can make a big difference. These are devices that are currently undergoing research trials. And though we are not at the finish line, where I can tell you we have these to offer you clinically in the office and we know they're safe and effective, we're not at the starting line either. Real concrete progress has been made towards developing novel devices that might help lower the eye pressure without the need for eye drops. And that's incredibly exciting and really unique in the history of glaucoma. And so we'll see as these trials take place whether in fact these devices prove themselves to be safe and effective but uh, the research is ongoing. And it, it is, as always, fundamentally important that you speak with your own eye care provider about what treatments for glaucoma are important for you. And to remember that the information you learn is often a good way to stimulate questions, but not always a good way to answer them. So we're happy to talk with you about your individual cases. And I think that that's really an important part of your care. So thank you. We'll get you off to your break, and I'm happy to take any questions before we finish.